Well, we've talked about planning. Let's now talk about methodology. You have done all the work really up front to plan. Now just implement. First thing in your methodology, you've got that charter and you're going to have a document. You're going to have a methodology document that basically contains program information. The program information is just, okay, what are we trying to accomplish and how far are we going to go? Scope and objectives. And that is communicated to all of your team members who are doing the audit. You've already allocated the resources, you've communicated your whole plan, you've gotten, at least in theory, cooperation from everybody. So you have a document and you say, okay team, you do this, you do this, you do this, and uh, we'll, uh, co we'll connect together tonight and we'll debrief, see how we did. So we start with our methodology document. And then we have our work program, and this is basically based on our strategy and our plan. Our whole plan is we're going to pen test the network, we're going to um, do a vulnerability scan on the servers, we're going to make sure that uh, people are following procedure in terms of locking workstations, we're going to make sure that passwords are um, complex, we're going to make sure that people are changing passwords, we're going to make sure that there aren't any accounts that are three years old and no one's been there. And so we have just a very clear sort of document on what we're trying to do, our whole approach. Okay, you, you have the um, best sort of method with people, so you're going to chat people up a bit and just find out how many people are tail tailgating, are they propping open the server room door, has anybody been getting into the telecom room or whatever. And so we've got this whole strategy and plan that we are now implementing. The whole process, we've planned for it already. We know what it is that we're auditing, the subject. We know our objectives, and the objectives, again, are based on what is management trying to accomplish, and we're going to help them find out whether or not they are accomplishing it. We know the scope. It's only this town. It's only this department. It's only this process. It's only this, depart it's only this particular set of servers. It's only something very specific. We have our plan together. Now we start gathering data. We go through our whole methodology, we start asking, we look at logs, we do our, our pen testing if that's part of it, we um, look at procedures, we start with may I see your policy, uh, may I see any procedures and any documents that you have people follow. And we look and see where are the procedures posted, do people know, are they being trained. Once we've gathered all of this data and the data will be evidence, and it can be evidence of compliance or non-compliance. Then we evaluate. And remember, we're gathering facts and we're providing an informed opinion. But our informed opinion is always substantiated by very clear, hard evidence. And then once we have all of that, we communicate our findings and our result and our recommendations. And um, we have our report, which is our deliverable. And it will probably also include some follow-up, maybe in three months or six months or one year's time. As you're doing this, you will be on the lookout for fraud. You should be. Remember how we talked about going in with some professional skepticism. You don't take anyone's word for it, they're doing something. You, you actually go and you watch them. And you try to watch them in a way that they haven't had time to like clean up their act before you walk in the door kind of thing. And so um, you have to realize that chances are very good you'll uncover, if not just people cutting corners or just honestly not doing something the way they should be because they didn't know, that they, they weren't trained or uh, whatever the procedure was wasn't disseminated properly, but also actually people deliberately trying to hide things or two employees coll doing colluding together, you know, collusion where they're, they're acting together. So you will be looking at this. Now, when you come across this, this is where you have to be extremely professional. You need to report that to management. You need to gather material evidence of the fraud, and it's up to the management to determine what the fraud mechanisms could be, but you may discover them, and you must provide due care when performing this work, because if you're going to say, yeah, I saw people stealing this or whatever, or I see evidence of it, it's, it's just got to be just the facts. You've got to provide just the facts, and you may hear all kinds of gossip, and it, it's good to hear gossip because it can alert you to things. You need to also realize that, that 
you have to have material evidence to substantiate gossip because who knows why people are gossiping. They could have all sorts of their own agendas. And, but then again, you could have people gossiping and it's something really going on that management isn't aware of or actually uh, trying to play down. So realize that there will be fraud detection in your work and uh, as you do that, as, as you're aware of that, you need to collect substantial material evidence to support what you've seen and, and it is just the facts. So with that, for conducting your audit, we start out, we had the plan, we reviewed the whole plan with management, we got them to agree to cooperate with us. We determine how we're going to approach this and again there's no one set way because there's no one style of business. Which individuals should you interview? What department policy standards and guidelines should you be looking at? You, you want to look at all of them if you can uh, and identify ones that you could were not able to look at. Um, identify the tools or methods. So I used this particular pen test tool and this particular port scanner and I reviewed logs and so you identify exactly how you did stuff. And once you've got all that, you evaluate all of your findings, you document, document all of the activities that um, produce the results, you gather any evidence that you need, and you then create your report, and you communicate the report to the right people, and then if necessary, you have a follow-up. So that is conducting the audit in general. Now remember, ISACA has those guidelines and those procedures. You can look at those and they're very specific ones. I mean, they, they go very, very deep and very specific for very specific types of audits. So depending upon the audit you're doing, you can look that up on ISACA's site. Some of them you do have to be a member to actually to get a copy of. And so anyway, follow these things. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the evidence itself.